What's going on everybody, Wild Time here with another World of Warcraft video. A few weeks ago I put up a poll on my channel on whether or not people thought that I should run Iron Docks. Because Iron Docks is this um, sort of like mecca of transmog uh, running that people talk about. As a matter of fact, what prompted this is that I was in a group and we were farming some things and this uh, person in the group was like, man, I made 180k last week running Iron Docks. So I said, how many times did you run it? He's like, I don't know, maybe 60 times. So that's about 10 times a day. And I was thinking, that has not been my experience <laughs> with Iron Docks. Uh, so I decided uh, that based on that comment and um, per request, I was going to make a video about my experience with Iron Docks. Whether you should farm it, whether you shouldn't farm it, um, how good it is, how bad it is, uh, and how to do it. So that's what this video is. But before we get into it, uh, thank you everybody that is a subscriber. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Uh, we got World of Warcraft gold making content is mostly what's on this channel. And then a little bit of Mythic Plus and whatever else comes up uh, when the new season uh, comes out in Dragonflight. Also join the Discord. The link is down below. Leave a comment and like the video. Now, Iron Docks. Uh, it's what you hear about a lot. As a matter of fact, I think Student just did one about, you know, making 300k gold or something like that uh, on his 100 run series. Now, I'm not going to do a 100 run series, um, mainly because, you know, that's sort of his thing and I don't really want to piggyback. So what I'm doing is a realistic approach to how sane people can do this. So I ran Iron Docks 30 times. Now, if you break that down, it takes about five minutes to run it. Right, so that's about 20, what is it, 25 or so minutes a day. It's about five runs a day, so about 25 minutes a day. Uh, if you do six days a week and then, and then you take off a day, right? So this is very um, manageable. So this is 25, 30 minutes a day running this uh, about five times a day for six days. But I've been posting the items for two weeks, okay? Now, the first week I was doing it wrong, right? So... I was not doing it correctly. The way you want to run Iron Docks is you want to run it with a uh, character that has an Outland Garrison, not Outland, is it Outland? No, Draenor. Draenor Garrison, and you need to have a trading post at level two. If you don't have a trading post at level two, you're going to be selling yourself short. Part of the reason that Iron Docks is good is that when you run it, not only do you have a shot at Transmog, but you have a chance if you have the um, trader's post at a rank two in your garrison to drop items that make uh, the auctioneer. And so you can sell those in the auction house and those go for about two to five K each. So we'll look at that uh, in a little bit here, but let's first talk about how to get to Iron Docks. Um, right now, anyway, I'm not sure if this is going to change in Dragonflight, but right now you can come to Orbos down here, um, a little, little bit, what is that, southeast of the flight point, or of the center here, I guess, southwest of the flight point. Anyway, here we are in Orbos, and you're going to take the portal to Gorgrunt. If you don't have the portal to Gorgrunt for some reason in the future, if they, if they remove that for some reason, you can always take your garrison Hearthstone, or you can go to your major city, and um, you can port to uh, Ashran if you're Alliance. Um, there's another port. It's just called something different if you use the Horde. But there is a port there for you. All right, so then you come here. Uh, and this takes you up by the Black Rock Foundry, and where you need to be is up here at the Iron Dock. So there's not really a good flight point, so we're just going to go ahead and fly on over there. All right, here we are, the Iron Docks, and you want to make sure that your dungeon difficulty is set to normal. You can run on Heroic, and you can run it on Mythic, but Heroic, if you kill the boss, which you're going to have to, you can only run it uh, once per day, and then Mythic, you can run it once per week. So set it on normal, and that way you can spam it. You want to do this ideally on a character that has uh, a similar function to Dreamwalk, where you can port to another place and then port back. So Dreamwalk works, uh, Deathgate works, the like Serenity place thing for monks works, um, and then also if you don't have any of those characters, you can always start a group. You can come down here to Group Finder, Pre-made Groups, Custom, Start a Group, make it something like Bleh, right? List the group. And that actually puts you in a group. So then you can go into the dungeon, run it, 
and then um, <clears throat> right click over here leave party and then it will in one minute it will actually kick you out back to the start so that's sort of a workaround if you don't have a class that can uh, dreamwalk or something like that I like dreamwalk because there's not um, there's a one minute cooldown on it but it's it's fairly instant um, when you're when you're porting out and porting back in all right so we're going to go ahead and actually um, run this I'll show you exactly how I do it now this is going to take about five minutes so if you can't wait five minutes to see how I run it then feel free to skip ahead and uh, check out the total but you just want to gather all these guys up right so pretty much all we're doing is gathering everybody up and you got to be sort of uh, sneaky here right because you can't just these older content dungeons you can't always just run by the mobs you have to like stand on them for a second or or they won't get aggro a lot of the times right so we'll get these guys and uh, we'll get this guy. I'm just going to soothe him to get him over here. They're pulling me around. I normally do this dungeon in um, two to three pools. So if you have a better way, that's fine, right? Um, I, I've ran this several times, and I haven't really found a way that makes uh, too huge of a difference. I don't use any speed food, right? Like, I don't use any... Um, like uh, bonefish or bear tartar or anything like that because I'm not really killing and running. I'm mainly just mounted and then using my uh, speed buffs as well. So on a druid, I'm using my tiger dash and I'm using my uh, stampeding roar uh, to sort of get around uh, during slow times. But other than that, I am just on my mount if i was on another class i would just stay mounted the reason i use those two on druid is because with the speed set that i have i actually end up going like 400 percent speed instead of the 200 that you get mounted so it's actually faster for me to do it um, that way <clears throat> when they're on cooldown but right here i'm just going around picking everybody up and this is where i'm going to do my first um my first kill here swipe them all down swipe 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 and then see these guys how we pulled all that and these guys didn't even get pulled so then we'll loot it And you can use faster looter. I do have that um, Activated sometimes You can see right here. We got this in size dax and stonebreaker vam vam braces So the the prices on these are somewhat inflated. I found that with iron docks um, the prices will be high but there'll be like no seller rate, right? So they're high, but not a lot of people are buying them. But if you go by this, right, which we all know this isn't always accurate, it looks like I've already made 8,000 gold in the first like few minutes of the dungeon, right? So that doesn't always work accurately because you can never tell um, like what something's actually going to sell for. I'm on a uh, high population RP server in North America. Um, the RP part, I'm not sure if that has anything to do with sale rate or not. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like my uh, full realm that is non-RP actually sells stuff more often. Um, it used to be a PvP, like open world PvP uh, RP realm, or uh, yeah, role-playing in PvP, PvP. But since they got rid of the PvP realms, it's just now an RP. The only thing that I'm afraid of long term on an RP realm is that we're not going to get a lot of new players, right? I feel like most people coming to the game are not going to join role-playing um, servers. Now, the only reason I say that is because out of all the WoW players I've met and I've been playing since the end of Kata, I, I couldn't tell you really more than like two or three that have been um, role-playing, right? So I am actually going to stop here, and I'll kill these guys, just because you get the blues that you can sell. And then these take a while to uh, catch up to you. So if you run these all the way to the end, which you can do, they take forever like to catch up. You can see they're still like all the way back here. So we'll just run back here, we'll get them. And then we are going to um, loot them on the way as we can. And then there's one last pull that we'll do here up around the corner so as you can see I'm going 213 right now with um, just my regular speed set
and some of the speed buffs in cat form. We did get a true steel lockbox right there, which is nice. You never know what the, those are going to bring. And if you have a character that is skinning at the end of this, you can actually get some like raw beast hide. Collective leather is something that's going to drop from mobs. But the raw beast hide sells for, I don't know, it's around like one gold or something like that. It's not much. So I just soothed him down there to pull them. And then this is the last pack right here, actually. I don't ever really wait for this last guy to spawn. But if these guys are dead by the time he comes out, I'll go over there and uh, and grab him as well. Just because you can get a little bit of extra gold that way with some of the blues that the boss is going to drop. So he's doing his thing over there. They're letting him out. And you can see right there, like nothing dropped, right? We didn't get anything. But there's two greens at the start and then uh, nothing on that run. So sometimes that's how it goes. But we'll go ahead and we'll skin these real quick. And then since he's up, we'll go ahead and down them real fast. That'll give us a 30, 40, 50 extra gold right there. And, and that's going to add up as you're, uh, as you're doing it. But by no means, if this guy's not up when everybody's dead, it's time for you to pour it out. Don't mess with him. All right, because actually that gave us about six extra gold. Wait a minute. Yep, eight. Eight, about 16 extra gold right there. So not huge right okay so and then what you do after that is you dream walk out or you leave your group and then it's going to take you to um outside of the dungeon and then you can restart it and then you can run it again and you're going to be able to do that 10 times in an hour now for example on that run let's pull it up and see here um <clears throat> what we got we got an iron lock box uh some trash some blues that we could sell off and then we got uh, just three of these green items here. Some beast hide. And I sell this raw cleft of leather, the rylic eggs, and the sumptuous fur. All right. So let's switch over to the tune that I've sold all this on. And I'll give you the results of two weeks. Uh, the reason this is on a different tune is because I originally started running it on that tune and then realized, hey, I need to be on a tune that has um, the trading post. So let's go ahead and go to a Turkey Club and we can see what we made. Okay, here we are on Turkey Club. Uh, like I said, I started running it on this guy because I wanted to only show the things that sold from Iron Docks, uh, but then quickly realized that I needed uh, to be able to get those auction uh, parts. So we can pull up in the mailbox, and <clears throat> this has actually um, been listed here uh, for two weeks, but you can see some of these only go back like seven days. Last week, I did clear out a few items, uh, but there were no transmogs that sold. It was all the raw beast hide, the rye like egg, sumptuous fur, and stuff like that. So let's look at um, realistically uh, what we're looking at here. Um, after two weeks of posting the items that I gained in week one, as you can see, a lot of uh, these sold. The raw beast hide, 73 for 86 gold. Here is a transmog that sold. Orunai shoulder pads for 1800 gold. The rylac eggs, the cleft hoof meat, uh, sumptuous fur. Oh, there's a weighted jack o' lanterns in there. Raw beast hide, raw cleft hoof meat, raw cleft hoof meat, just for silver, right? I'm just selling everything that I pick up. Um, growth stopper amulet, shard back vamp braces. Creeper Shawl, Broadaxe, so a few 300s and 800. Um, the biggest one that we had here was the Incised Bow of the Harmonious, sold for 3,000 gold. So the Incised Bow and uh, the Shoulder Pads were our biggest ones here. That gives us roughly 7,375 gold. If we minus the, white, the weighted Jack and Lantern, we'll just say this is about 7,300 now, you also make um, raw gold. I I'm averaging it at about 200 gold per run. So, you know, if you run it 30 times, that's 6,000 gold. So 6,000 plus this uh, 7,300 down here is going to be, what, 13,300 gold in 30 runs. Um, and that's horrible, right? <laughs> so that's, for me, like this is not, like if this is something that I'm like, yeah, I want to run for some transmog, this may be something that I do because there are some major transmogs in there 
and I'll show you here in a second um, the actual value that I have up on the auction house that just hasn't sold. And we all know with the transmog that it takes a while to sell, right? But for me, I, I hate videos that are like, you know, 100,000 gold an hour, but it may take you an hour to run it, but then two months to get that gold, right? So there's a lot of variables when you're talking about transmog. So this is what actually sold. We're at about 13,000, but let's look at what actually, um, what we actually have listed. So we'll go here, we'll go to our auctions, go to TSM, my auctions, and the actual item value that we have listed from those, uh, and this is all from Iron Docks, is 56,700. All right, so you look, it's just a bunch of greens. But the thing that I was talking about here, from the um, uh, having the trading post at rank two is items like this. These drop and people have to get these uh, to put them together so that they can make an auctioneer at their trading post. But if you look, 3,000 gold at an 09 sell rate. 3,000 gold almost at an 09 sell rate. So these are probably about the drops that you're looking for outside of one of the biggest drops that you can hope to get and i'll show you that in a second also got this though the drainic uh tree cleaver one hundred ninety-four thousand gold on my realm uh eighteen thousand regional sale average but the regional market value is 214k so when that sells that'd be nice that was a big one to get out of there golden wedding ring i take that back this isn't from um uh Iron Docks, I don't really know where that's from or if it's ever going to sell for 30k, but that'd be nice if it did. You got a blue, but it's a trinket. O2 sell rate at 5,800. And then just a bunch more um, greens. Got this one. Chained Orb. It's a neck piece, though. It's an epic. And that's about it. So um, item value is about 56k with the 13k that we made now that is going to greatly go up if you get one item this is the one um item that i know of that is sort of the holy grail of all of um drain or transmog and that is the black rock bulwark now look at this it has a really low sell rate of 0.01 the market value is 574,000 gold uh, my realm right now, there's only one listed, and the person has it listed for 1,361,585 gold and 95 silver. So if you come across this, then all of your runs were worth it, right? So even if you run this um, 30 times a day for two, three weeks, or even if you run it 10 times a day, once a week, right? You run it 10 times a week, um, just as part of your gold making routine, if that's something you like doing, and this drops, you're going to have to wait for it to sell probably, but this is going to be really, really, really good. This is really what you're after here. This and the, the auctioneer parts. So uh, it can be worth it if you get the right stuff to drop. But that's how it is with all transmog runs, right? It needs to be the right stuff to drop or you're pretty much um, hosed or ha having, you know, low gold per hour. So... That's my experience with Iron Docks. Is it something that I'm going to keep doing? Uh, maybe. I'm not rolling it out. Uh, probably run it every once in a while. Um, but the transmog farms, uh, going through dungeons like that, it's like high, um, high reward, high risk, right? Because you could spend a lot of time and just end up with a bunch of stuff that doesn't sell. Or you could spend uh, a little bit of time and get some of the mega items. So it's up to you if you like transmog farming. Um, and you iron docks is something you want to add to i've shown you you know exactly how to do it what you need to do it uh specifically the trading post um rank two in your garrison and some of the items that you can get from there that are the big tickets and then just some of the normal run-of-the-mill items so if what i shared interests you and it sounds like something that you want to do then uh yeah i'm glad that i've helped uh, let me know in the comments below your experience with iron docks um, if you've ever gotten that bulwark shield or if you've ever had any luck with anything else from there, uh, let me know. Don't forget to like the video, sub to the channel, join the Discord down below, have fun. Remember, it's a game. Have fun with it. And until next time, I'll catch you all later.